New developments on the tragic dog attack in Converse. Overnight, we learned the one-year-old who was hospitalized didn't survive. We got the details in just a bit. Plus. If you choose to stay in one of those evacuation areas, you're going to die. A stark warning there as people across Florida's west coast are fleeing areas where Hurricane Milton is expected to make landfall. We're going to tell you when it could hit tomorrow coming up in the next 10 minutes. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Obviously, we got a jam-packed show this morning. A lot of news on the mind right now. It is 6 a.m. Thanks so much for joining us on this Tuesday. Yeah, we definitely thank you for starting out your morning with us. And again, a lot to get to. And we're going to go ahead and get straight to our breaking news overnight. This being a shooting on the city's far west side. Our Patty Santos is live right now in the 9800 block of West Over Hills Boulevard near Highway 151. You see it right there on the map. Patty, what do we have so far? Hey there. Well, police just wrapped up the scene here about an hour ago, but the investigation is ongoing because they're trying to figure out uh, what happened here. Here's what we know. According to police, they were called to this uh, um, condo area here about uh, 3 30 this morning. They say it, there was a homeowner, a property owner that thought someone was breaking into his vehicle. He came out and fired some shots uh, a little bit while later. A, a person showed up at the hospital with uh, some injuries. So right now, police are trying to figure out if that is a suspect that they're looking for. Uh, the latest right now is police tell us that this suspect does match the description, but he is not talking to police. Again, this all started when a property owner thought someone was breaking into their truck, a vehicle, and they opened open shots. The suspect got away. Um, uh, but right now, police are trying to piece together whether this suspect that's at the hospital is connected to this shooting. So the investigation is ongoing. We hope to have some more updates for you. You can check back on KSAT.com. We'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Patty. We also have some new developments overnight in the case of a one-year-old baby boy who was attacked by dogs in Converse. Yesterday, the Bear County Medical Examiner tells us that that baby has died. Yeah, a tragic outcome here. Our Devin Karp is live at University Hospital with new information. Devin. RJ and Jaffney, that one-year-old has now been identified as Jariah Johnson. Now, the Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says that 36-year-old Heather Rodriguez was in charge of watching the baby in her home when those dogs attacked the baby. Deputies say at some point she left the home and left her own 13-year-old daughter in charge. Now, during that time, deputies say the dogs forced their way into the room the child was in and attacked the baby for an unknown reason. The sheriff's office says the teen tried her best to protect the baby, but we're told there was a struggle given that the dogs were XL bullies, a pit bull mix. That's a very strong breed. Sheriff Salazar says Rodriguez is in custody, but not cooperating with detectives. At last check, Rodriguez was charged with injury to a child. It's unclear right now on whether that charge is going to be upgraded. My understanding is that these dogs, uh, there has been a, a dog attack episode here involving these dogs at this residence before. My understanding is that the owner uh, was, was cited at that time. Sheriff Salazar didn't know for what reason or how long Rodriguez left the home. And like he mentioned, this was not deputy's first time to visit the home because of those dogs. Back in April, the sheriff says that the same dogs were barking and growling, preventing a neighbor from getting out of his car. She was later cited at the time for not having her dogs on leashes. Coming up on 630, what one neighbor had to say about the dogs and how Animal Control Services says they've got resources. We've got all that available online at KSOT.com. For now, Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. And as you might imagine, with another dog attack here in San Antonio, this story getting a ton of reaction online in one Facebook comment here. A commenter who goes by CD says that she knew those dogs were dangerous and still left a baby and a child alone with them. How about Katerina? She writes, how many more incidents like this need to happen until real action is taken? And in another post, Abel Zamora says, sad situation for all, but she needs to be held accountable. While Carrie Ann Villanueva writes that that poor 13 year old is going to be traumatized for life. I can't even imagine what she went through to try and save that baby. We're going to continue to follow this story and we'll bring you updates on air and online and on the KSAP Plus apps. 
All right, some other overnight news here. New this morning, San Antonio police say that a driver is dead after he crashed into the back of an 18-wheeler along I-35 late last night on the northeast side. So this happened near the intersection of I-35 at O'Connor Road near all of that construction on the northeast side. You see the flames just shooting out from this crash. Police say that when the driver of the pickup truck crashed into the back of an 18-wheeler, the pickup got stuck and pinned underneath the trailer and caught on fire. Police say that that man tried died inside at the scene and it took firefighters over an hour to put that gas fueled fire out. No other injuries were reported in this crash. Definitely a terrifying sight to see, but this morning we're looking out on our roadways. Things do not look that bad. Everything is looking pretty well. we got so many people out on the roadways as they're starting their day right now. I think the only thing that we have from TxDOT is a construction site that we've been telling you about all morning long on I-10 at Woodlawn. Uh, they have one of the lanes blocked, so if that is your area, keep that in mind right here on US 281 and Hildebrand traffic is moving along just smoothly as well. RJ. All right, so Mia Montgomery is in for Justin Horn uh, this morning and uh, we're glad to have Mia with us. Yes. Yeah, as we kind of switch gears a little bit and talk some weather, obviously some nice mornings, but uh, toasty in the afternoon. And that is exactly <laughs> what the theme is going to be, not just today, but over the next several days, unseasonably hot daytime highs. But as we start to see the humidity lower over the next couple of days, mornings are going to be very pleasant and fall like back in the low to mid 60s here in San Antonio. But for now, we're in the upper 60s. Still not too bad in the Alamo City. Wake it up this Tuesday. 67 in New Braunfels. Check out portions of the Hill Country. Kerrville actually below 60 degrees. Checking in at 59. Good morning to you in Bernie. A temperature around 61. So again, pretty pleasant out there to kickstart the day. Once the sun comes up, plenty of it in store even into the afternoon. But notice how that's going to help your temperatures climb. Unseasonably hot yet again. 88 degrees around noon. We've We've got a forecast high around 95. By the way, if that were to verify, it would tie the existing record high for the day of 95 that was set back in 1962. And moving forward, still 90s are in the forecast into the afternoons, but those mornings will be a little bit more fall like here in town. And of course, we continue to track Hurricane Milton, the center of that system just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula as it continues to move through the central Gulf. As of the 4 a.m. update in from the National Hurricane Center, it is a high end Category 4 storm. No impacts to Texas expected, but it is expected to make landfall along the western coastline of Florida late tomorrow as a major hurricane. We're going to have the latest on that system and get you the latest forecast track as well coming up a little bit later on. All right, thank you very much for that, Mia. And as Mia just mentioned, Hurricane Milton downgraded overnight to a Category 4 storm, but still posing a massive and historic threat. Mm -hmm. Up to 15 feet of a storm surge is possible in areas of Florida that are still recovering from Hurricane Helene. That's right. ABC's Rena Roy tells us that this is the first time that Tampa could take a direct hit in decades. This morning, the mass exodus from Florida's Gulf Coast is underway, with Hurricane Milton exploding into a once-in-a-lifetime storm. This is going to an, be an event like none other. Uh, Helene was mostly a water event for us. Uh, this is going to be wind, water, storm surge, rain, you name it. It's going to bring everything towards our community. Hurricane hunters flying into the center of Milton, monitoring the historically rapid growth of the storm. In just hours, becoming the strongest hurricane in the Gulf in nearly two decades, fueled by the warmer than usual water. You can see satellite images of the storm as it churns in the ocean. Milton is expected to weaken into a Category 3 storm before potentially making landfall sometime Wednesday night or early Thursday near Tampa Bay. 15 inches of rain possible. And the Tampa area could see up to 15 feet of storm surge. We want everybody to be safe, but if you stay in an evacuation zone, I can't promise you that you'll be safe. Airports in Tampa and Orlando shutting down. Schools in at least 20 counties closed today. Many more following suit on Wednesday. Millions across the state rushing to prepare once again. Less than two weeks after Hurricane Helene devastated parts of the state. People stocking up on supplies, grocery store shelves running bare, some gas stations running dry, but the governor insists there is enough supply. Another urgent concern this morning is the debris from Hurricane Helene still piled up in coastal communities. Some landfills now open around the clock. Crews will continue working to clear everything until tropical storm force winds hit. They will need every minute.
FEMA says 20 million meals and 40 million liters of water are ready to go and 30,000 workers from as far as California are standing by to help restore power. Rena Roy, ABC News, Tampa, Florida. And sticking with FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency is used to dealing with storms and is currently helping the Southeast prepare for Hurricane Milton we just saw there and obviously recover from Hurricane Helene. However, FEMA now saying that it's facing a different kind of storm right now, a whirlwind of misinformation. FEMA says that false rumors about its work are making it harder to help with Hurricane Helene and Milton. One of those rumors inaccurately claims that survivors only get $750 from the agency. Well, it turns out people can apply for more, but FEMA says that that misinformation is definitely an obstacle. Congress controls the, controls the agency's budget. Another rumor alleges that FEMA is limiting some efforts in North Carolina, but the state's governor says that that is not the case. On Capitol Hill, the Supreme Court is back on the bench with an agenda that includes cases on guns, transgender, medical care, and more. There are 40 appeals the high court has agreed to decide so far. The docket falls short of the major Supreme Court decisions in recent history, like overturning Roe versus Wade or ending affirmative action. Today, the court will hear arguments on ghost guns, which are untraceable weapons made from mail order kits and whether the ATF has the authority to regulate and require them to have serial numbers. The court's term will run through the end of next summer. All right, listen up if you own a Ram truck because uh, maybe you might have to make a trip to the dealer. Chrysler is recalling over 129,000 of its My Ram 1500 pickups that were built in 2023. So it turns out there's an issue with the steering column control modules in those vehicles. Officials say that that glitch could cause drivers to wrongfully or wrongly signal for a lane change, which could then result in a potential accident. Repairs will be made free of charge so Ooh, just some information there yes definitely need to get that checked absolutely all right 612 right now 68 degrees outside so to come before 6 30 the spurs are officially back we've got the best plays from the last night's preseason matchup and after the break we've got some major ksat community events that are coming up this month what you can add to your calendar in just a few moments take a live look outside at the city real quick good morning san antonio thanks for starting your day with us you already know we have you covered everywhere from the hurricane milton the spurs talk and what your commute looks like but first before we go to break that's right we want to share a moment here to recognize the frio county sheriff michael morse who died after a long battle with cancer. During his 35 year career, he worked on rehabilitating the Frio County Jail, served as a game warden, and was committed to conserving natural resources. The Frio County Sheriff's Office put out a heartfelt statement saying that he will be missed. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Well, did you know that cancer is now the number one cause of death for the Latino community? Researchers from the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio also say that Latinos could face, get this, a 142% increase in cancer cases in coming years. And in South Texas, Latinos face higher rates of cervical, stomach, and liver cancers compared to Latinos in other parts of the state of Texas. So we want to talk about this. Later today, KSAT is hosting a a live stream town hall beginning at two o'clock this afternoon and the conversation will be led by Stephanie Jimenez. You can tune in any way that you want to stream. Go ahead and visit KSAT.com for more information. Also join us at the Hemisphere Park on October the 19th for Light the Night. Hundreds of lanterns will illuminate the sky to celebrate, honor, and remember people impacted by blood cancer. You can check out ksatcommunity.com for complete information. All right, yeah, that should be a good event out there at Hemisphere Park. Okay, so want to get to some traffic because we're seeing a few more things pop up now. Kind of figured that that would be the case as we get closer to our 6.30 half hour. So let's show us some of those cameras out there real quick with your traffic authority. And basically right now, TxDOT reporting that we do have a crash on I-35. There's going to be the southbound lanes at O'Connor. We also have a stalled I-35 North at Schwab Road and 281 South at Evans Road. You're taking a look at the UIW area right there. 281 Hildebrand. Good thing is that traffic is moving pretty good for the most part along 281. Now things are looking really calm here in our weather department right on a local level. But again, this Milton is churning mm -hmm. and it's kind of scary. It's going to be a day dangerous storm for Florida. It's expected to make landfall late tomorrow night and into early Thursday. 
It's a high in Category 4 right now, and it could briefly re-strengthen into a Category 5. The good news is it is expected to weaken slightly before making landfall. However, it is still going to be, yeah. again, very, very powerful by the time it reaches the Tampa Bay area. So let's go ahead and start with that. I do want to show you the latest on Milton. Again, this is the latest as of the 4 a.m. update. We'll get another one in here uh, in the next couple of hours. But right now, winds are sustained at 155 miles per hour. The center of this system just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. It is churning over Gulf waters that are in the low to mid 80s. So that is definitely warm enough to help a system like this continue this strength again, potentially re-strengthening into that Category 5 classification by this afternoon. Notice it is expected to take more of a turn farther up to the north as well as the east. Weaken ever so slightly before approaching the Tampa Bay area, even near Sarasota as well. By late Wednesday night and into early Thursday, it is worth reiterating that this is moving away from the state of Texas, so we are not going to see any impacts from Milton here at home, but it is expected to cross over the Florida Peninsula and then work into the western Atlantic by late Thursday night and into Friday. Storm surge is going to be a real concern for folks over there in the Sunshine State. Take a look at the projected peak storm surge from the National Weather Service from Spring Hill down to Tampa, 5 to 10 feet from Tampa down to Fort Myers, upwards of 10 to 15 feet above ground level, certainly a possibility. And then you tack on just the flooding concerns from the rain itself. It is possible by the time all is said and done that rainfall totals in the range of five to 10 inches localized upwards of 15 inches will certainly be possible as well. And that is on top of the rain that parts of Florida did see from Helene that made landfall near Tallahassee just shy of two weeks ago. So we'll continue to keep you posted on Milton if you have friends and family out that way. But for now, here at home across San Antonio and the vast majority of the state of Texas, we are actually expecting quite the opposite. We actually don't have any rain chances in the forecast cast over the next seven days, unfortunately, but at least mornings will start to trend a little bit cooler and more fall like out there, especially by tomorrow, even though high temperatures are still going to be hotter than average in the 90s. Right now, waking up in town, we're at 68 degrees with clear skies in place. Plenty of sunshine is in the forecast today. 82 degrees by 10 a.m. as we take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast already pushing 90 as we head into the early afternoon hours. There's that forecast high right around 95. That's about 10 degrees above average for this time of year. And again, if that 95 verifies, that actually will tie the existing record high for the day. But take a look at high temperatures in and around the San Antonio area. 94 out east in Gonzales, 95 in Nixon, 95 as well over in New Braunfels, and 95 off to our southwest in Divine. Now, dew points are in the 50s, not too bad right now. But as we take a look farther up to the north, we actually have even drier air, lower dew points, and that's what's going to start to move back into south central Texas over the next couple of days. So with that drier air returning, yes, daytime highs are still going to be hot out there even into the weekend, but those mornings are back in the low to mid 60s. So head out there for a couple hours right after the sun comes up. It's going to feel pretty nice. Get your morning run in. Yep. Walking dog the dog. Walking. Yep. Cup of coffee walk. on the front porch, but then into the afternoon, maybe switch over to ice. Yeah. Go to the pool. Yeah, there yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, 621 right now, 68 degrees outside. Just ahead, Wimby didn't play last night, but get this, Spurs fans got a chance to see the team in action before the regular season tips off. That's next before 630. RSV can severely affect the lungs and lower airways. But I'm protected with a Rexv. A Rexv is a vaccine used to prevent lower respiratory disease from RSV in people 60 years and older. RSV can be serious for those over 60, including those with asthma, diabetes, COPD, and certain other conditions. But I'm protected. A Rexv is proven to be over 82% effective in preventing lower respiratory disease from RSV and over 94% effective in those with these health conditions. A Rexv does not protect everyone and is not for those with severe allergic reactions to its ingredients. Those with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects are injection site pain, fatigue, muscle pain, headache, and joint pain. A Rexv is number one in RSV vaccine shots. RSV, make it a Rexv. 
Welcome back. Well, we are counting down and getting ready for the iconic Clásico Regio. That is the soccer matchup between Tigres and Rayados that is taking place out there at the Alamo Dome. Mm -hmm. In the case at 12, in that Spaniel team, you spoke with the Tigres players, who was also an Olympic gold medalist ahead of the match. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te sientes de ser parte de esta historia? Los dos equipos vienen a jugar en el patio de su casa. ¿Cómo te sientes sobre eso? Bien, contentos de que este clásico siga, siga creciendo, ¿no? que, la, que la afición también de, de Tigres siga creciendo. Sabemos que tenemos muchos aficionados de, de, de este lado de, de Estados Unidos y la verdad que estamos contentos ¿no? de poder ir a jugar un partido eh, tan importante para la ciudad, para nosotros. Eh, eh, allá con nuestros paisanos y que puedan disfrutar del, del partido y contentos, ¿no? Trataremos de, de sacar nuestro resultado para, para poder hacer y darle una alegría a la gente de Tigres. All right, yeah, very excited there. Those players are going to be representing for their fans up here in the state. So get your phone out right now and scan the QR code that you see on your screen. Why are we telling you this? That's because we are hosting a sweepstakes for KSAT Insiders to go ahead and win tickets to that big soccer match. Again, set for this Saturday inside the Alamo Dome. This is one of the biggest rivalries in soccer in the entire country of Mexico, pitting Monterrey's two teams, Tigres and Rayados. Now, the bring of the big matchup to San Antonio, as we've been talking about, and obviously people are very excited about the event. KSAT Insiders, you can enter for your chance to win four tickets to the game, but you have to be an insider. Very easy to sign up. All you need is your email address. The sweepstakes is now open and runs until tomorrow, right, RJ? October yes, the October. 9th. That would be tomorrow. Hey, mm -hmm. you yep. got some time. <laughs> <laughs> San Antonio Spurs open the preseason schedule against OKC inside Frost Bank Center. That's right. We see the guy right here, Chris Paul, Victor Womanyama, some guys just hanging out on the bench there. <laughs> they were among six Spurs who did not suit up. And word is, though, Wimby is going to play on Wednesday, start his preseason schedule. So former NBA champion Harrison Barnes, nice give and go there in the first quarter. And he sees Julian Champagne wide open on the corner. And he hits that three. Champagne buries it. He hits three, six three-pointers yesterday. Third quarter now. My guy, Stefan Castle. Look at my man go up there. <laughs> Kellen Johnson, look at that reaction. <laughs> After Castle's big time dunk, the UConn former star rookie for the Spurs making his presence known in this one. So the final from Frost Bank Center. Again, this is just preseason here. Thunder win this one 112 to 107. The Spurs will aim to bring all that physicality and some wins when Orlando comes to town on Wednesday. Again, tip off there at the Frost Bank Center, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. See, it was a close game. It was. We got yeah. a good team. We got a good team. <laughs> 628 right now, 68 degrees outside. All right, just ahead at 630. Hey, HEB, y'all, finally says that you can tap to pay from cards and digital wallets at registers. When shoppers, we're going to tell you when you can start using this new system. It was almost a tug of war for the baby between at least one of the dogs and the little girl. Right now in GMSA, new developments on the dog attack in Converse that has turned deadly overnight. What we've learned in the hours since then. Plus, our coverage continues on the Missions Ballpark plans near downtown. We're going to tell you what frustrated neighbors are saying this morning about a potential new stadium in that area. And we're going to take you outside, though, taking a look at live cam across the beautiful city of San Antonio. Mia Montgomery standing by. She's in for Justin Horn. She's going to tell us about some of our morning temps and also about a little bit warmer temps throughout the rest of the day. Good morning. It is 630 on your Tuesday. Again, thanks so much for waking up with us on this October the 8th. Month is trucking yes. along already, but something is not trucking along already. It's cooler temperatures. No, definitely not. So unfortunately, <laughs> that is not the case. And as we mentioned, Mia's in for Justin for us. We appreciate her hanging out with us. Uh, we're not really appreciating the 90 degrees, though, Mia. In no, <laughs> unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer until we can see a more noticeable cold front move through. There are indications that we could potentially potentially find a front move in later next week. That's something that we'll continue to monitor trends for. But in the meantime, it's not too terribly bad out there this morning. In fact, we've seen temperatures up in the hill country for places like Fredericksburg and Kerrville fall into the upper 50s. Meanwhile, we're sitting at 68 degrees here in San Antonio. Another hotter than average afternoon is on tap. 95 degrees, the forecast high temperature in town. Plenty of sunshine will be the theme yet again today. And moving forward, looking ahead 
ahead to the remainder of the work week and even into the upcoming weekend, hotter than average temperatures will continue with highs still in the 90s. At least we are expecting a slight dip in humidity levels, especially by tomorrow, which means that our mornings will be more pleasant and cool out there. Trending cooler low to mid 60s return here in the Alamo City. So we'll have the latest details on that, plus Hurricane Milton in the south central Gulf of Mexico. Right now, a major hurricane, no impacts to Texas, but it is expected to make landfall near the Tampa Bay area in Florida late tomorrow night. We'll get to the latest on that system as well coming up in just a few. Take a look at TransGuide real quick. We got a couple things that's popping up on TexDot right now, right here, US 90 and Loop 1604. You see some traffic moving along slowly right there. So if this is a part of your commute, please give yourself some extra time while they work through that. We do have a couple collisions to tell you about as well. Something's going on in, uh, on I-35 and O'Connor Road. Got a minor kind of collision going on right there that just broke out at 629. Another collision on I-10 and Bernie Stage Road. So again, if you guys are part of any of these commutes where uh, traffic is moving along a little bit slower. Give yourself some extra time, pack your patience and get to your spot and your destination safely. We have a new development overnight in the case of a one year old baby boy who was attacked by dogs in Converse yesterday. All right, a tragic outcome here. The Bear County Medical Examiner tells us that that baby has died. Our Devin Karp is live at University Hospital where the baby was taken and he has new information for us this Tuesday morning. Devin. RJ and Jaffney, the one-year-old boy, was identified as Jariah Johnson. Now, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us that 36-year-old Hannah Heather Rodriguez was in charge of watching Jariah in her home when those dogs attacked the baby. At last check, Rodriguez was charged with injury to a child. We don't know right now on whether that charge will be upgraded. Deputies say at some point she left the home and put her 13-year-old daughter in charge. During that time, deputies say the dogs forced their way into the room the child was in and attacked the baby for an unknown reason. The sheriff's office says the teen tried her best to protect the baby, but we're told there was a struggle, given that the dogs were XL bullies, a strong pit bull mix. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Rodriguez is in custody, but not cooperating with detectives. KSAT spoke with a neighbor yesterday who said he had heard the dogs barking and growling in the backyard in the past, but didn't think something like this could happen. That's a tragedy. That's truly a tragedy. I didn't... I didn't know that I, at first I thought they had a one year old from what I read and heard. And now I'm hearing that it wasn't even theirs. That's a that's a shame. Huh? Animal Care Services Interim Director Michael Shannon says many cases involving these dangerous animals in San Antonio are easily preventable. That's why he told his department is trying to hold animal owners accountable with citations. Now, ACS has several resources to help prevent some of these attacks. That includes spaying and neutering your animal, as well as making sure they're properly restrained or on a leash. Now, we do know that this woman was cited earlier for her dogs not being on a leash when they prevented a neighbor from getting out of his car. We've got all these resources available online for you at KSAT.com. Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Meanwhile, the University of Texas at San Antonio Police Department is investigating a sexual assault incident that occurred in an on-campus apartment complex. It happened over the weekend at University Oaks, which is a student housing complex managed by campus living villages. So far, there is no other information available. However, KSAT has contacted UTSA's police department for further information. Right now, the school says the support and safety resources are available to UTSA students who could potentially be victims of sexual assault. Later this morning, a murder trial resumes for a former John Jay High School student. Jesus San Miguel is accused of stabbing his friend and classmate last spring during a lunch break. During the first day of testimony, it was revealed that the victim in this case, Joshua Kinneman, initiated a fight with San Miguel over something that he told his girlfriend. The fight ended with Kinneman getting stabbed and dying from his injuries. The defense in this case told the jury during opening arguments that San Miguel was only defending himself. He doesn't rush at him and stab him. He doesn't stab him multiple times. He's standing there with his knife in his hand trying to de-escalate. Jesus has the knife. The guy runs into the knife, basically. And the state, during their opening argument, said that San Miguel knew what he was doing and can be seen in surveillance footage from that restaurant there taking the knife out of his pockets and that he fled the scene and never called 911. If he is found guilty, San Miguel faces up to life in prison. 
Two murders in the same public housing complex last week, and residents there are still shaken. It started on Tuesday at the Victoria Plaza Apartments on Barretta Street. A man was found dead during a welfare check. Then on Friday, another man's body was discovered. San Antonio police say the 59-year-old Nick Martinez was the man found on Tuesday. He died from a sharp force injury. And then on Friday, 52-year-old Donald Sterling was found with a gunshot wound to the head. This all happening at a complex intended for seniors and people with disabilities. They deserve also um, the, the comforts of, of having a roof over our head, being able to reside in a safe place. Now, that neighbor that you just heard from says that she is encouraged by the on-site security at the complex since the murders happened. Opportunity Home San Antonio did send out a statement saying that they are actively assessing security measures at Victoria Plaza. Continuing our coverage on the Missions Potential Park downtown. That's right. Take a look right here. This is a 2.3 acre piece of land, very valuable piece of land right there at Camarón Street near San Pedro Creek Park and West Martin Street. This is just one point of contention for neighbors as the Missions Baseball Stadium debate continues this morning. San Antonio Independent School District says that there is still no decision on whether it will sell the property to the downtown development group known as Weston Urban. They, along with the San Antonio Missions Ownership Group are hoping to move the baseball stadium to that downtown area. SAISD held a town hall last night where lots of frustrated neighbors shared their thoughts about a possible sale. Western Urban owns the majority of downtown property already. We deserve to be a part of a district that's going to stand up for them and their family against developers and wealthy individuals. A handful of neighbors do support actually moving that stadium to the downtown area. SAISD has not yet agreed to a mem memorandum of understanding, also known as an MOU or any other contract to sell the Cameron Street property at this time. However, the city has approved a formal non-binding agreement outlining tentative financing, development, construction and operations. The county will be considering one of those MOUs similar to the city's later on today. And happening today, Amazon's Prime Big Day deals here are back. Shoppers have a chance to save on their holiday shopping. If you want to get on top of that early, that is taking place today and tomorrow. So go ahead and take advantage of the discounts here. But experts saying that you can start by adding items into your Amazon cart and clicking save for later before you buy. I already got a Roomba in my cart. There we go. Here at home, HEB bringing tap to pay to its stores. The easy way to pay system has long been available almost everywhere except HEB for years. So starting now, some HEBs in San Antonio will accept tap to pay from cards and digital wallets at its cash registers, self-checkout lanes, and pharmacies. It'll take about a week for all HEBs in the area to roll the new feature out. However, HEB gas station pumps, still old school, will not accept that tap to pay. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you get that Apple wallet, yes, Apple Pay, all mm -hmm. you got to do is scan it right there. It's, I love it. It's super convenient. It is super. And like I said, I did it by accident. I was just like, this is, this is cool. Do you know what you bought? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It is 641 right now. We got 68 degrees outside. Just ahead, we're tracking Hurricane Milton as it takes aim at Florida and specifically the Tampa area. What's being done there ahead of that storm's arrival? 645, welcome back. Well, after reaching 180 miles per hour on Monday, Hurricane Milton has weakened from a Category 5 hurricane to a Category 4, but that is just for now. Mm -hmm. The storm is expected to make landfall near Tampa as a major Category 3 hurricane late Wednesday, less than two weeks after Hurricane Helene slammed into Florida's Big Bend region. Yeah, another round of major hurricanes out there. Ivan Rodriguez is in Tampa with the latest on this storm and evacuation efforts. This is literally catastrophic, and I can say without any dramatization whatsoever, if you choose to stay in one of those evacuation areas, you're going to die. Dire warning from the mayor of Tampa, as authorities beg people to evacuate ahead of Hurricane Milton. This hurricane is pushing me out. Many heeding the message. Florida highways have been crammed with what some state officials expect could be the largest evacuation since 2017's Hurricane Irma. For some, like Sheila Lokisano, this hurricane arrives as they're still trying to clean up from Hurricane Helene less than two weeks ago. Helene was, uh, it was a nightmare. I stayed. The whole island, all the 
all the islands around us have um, struggled. This time, Sheila's not taking any chances. It's not going to be easy to leave. Um, but I am leaving. The storm is projected to weaken and make landfall as a Category 3 near the Tampa area on Wednesday, packing 120 mile per hour winds. Its dangerous eye and eye wall could come ashore anywhere from Cedar Key in the north to Naples in the south. Been to the point where I'm literally looking at every item in our home and deciding do I take it or do I leave it? And the thought of it just floating in the water somewhere, um, it's just, it's really hard to bear. In Tampa, I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Mm, very stressful situation for mm -hmm. all of those residents out there where Hurricane Milton is one of the top 10 strongest hurricanes ever recorded in the Atlantic. So it's also the strongest hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico since Hurricane Rita in 2005. A lot of history right there and mm -hmm. history still being made. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy to see just how quickly Milton intensified. It went from a tropical storm status all the way to a category five hurricane within a period of about 24 hours. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that is the definition of rapid intensification, right? And of course, the waters in the Gulf of Mexico are warm enough to support that. And that's why it is still going to be a very dangerous storm as it works through the eastern Gulf of Mexico and then approaches the Sunshine State late tomorrow night is when it's expected to make landfall. So here is the latest on Milton. Again, this is still the 4 a.m. update. Wind sustained at 155 miles per hour. This is the latest from the National Hurricane Center. It is a high end category four hurricane. And I want to zoom this in because it looks like as of the last couple of scans that we've got in satellite imagery here, the eye is looking a little bit more pronounced, which could be an indication that Milton is once again trying to strengthen. So as it does continue to sit over these warm waters, water temperatures in the low to mid 80s, it could potentially re-strengthen into a category five by this afternoon. The good news is, though, as it takes a turn farther up to the north as well as the east, it is expected to weaken slightly, but still a major hurricane. Category three by the time it approaches the Tampa Bay area late Wednesday night and into early Thursday. Then it crosses over the Florida Peninsula and works its way into the Western Atlantic by the end of the day on Thursday. But storm surge peaking upwards of 10 to 15 feet, especially near Tampa Bay and stretching down to the Fort Myers area. Rainfall totals upwards of five to 10 inches certainly will be a possibility by the time all is said and done. Hurricane watches across the eastern half of Florida. Tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings now in place, especially near Tampa and stretching over to the Sarasota area. So we will continue to keep you posted on the latest developments with Milton over the next couple of days. But as far as us, we are concerned here in South Central Texas, we're expecting quite the opposite. A quiet weather pattern is in store, hotter than average daytime highs, but still pleasant mornings. Right now we're sitting in the upper 60s and low 70s in and around Bear County. Some upper 50s though across portions of the hill country. We are going to see plenty of sunshine throughout this Tuesday, helping those high temperatures warm 88 degrees expected around noon. We've got a forecast high temperature right around 95. If that verifies, that will tie the existing record high for the day that was set back in 1962. More record challenging warmth in store tomorrow, but notice lower humidity is going to work back in. So while high temperatures will still stay in the 90s into next weekend, notice your morning lows back in the low to mid 60s. So more pleasant and refreshing to step out to over the next couple of days, y'all. Thank you, Mia. Let's head out to Transguide real quick, taking a look at the city. Of course, if you're at your, uh, you got a lot of traffic happening right there on US 90, Loop 1604. Text dot reflecting a couple of minor collisions, shoulders closed, not causing that much of a disturbance, but that may not be the case everywhere, right, RJ? No, definitely not. So west side of town has gotten very busy. This is the far west side, and we are finally going to check in with Alex Gomez this morning. He's been busy covering some of our other overnight news. Looks like he's got an incident on the near west side of town. Alex, what's the latest out there? Yeah, good morning, RJ. Here's another incident on Highway 90. This is going to be 90 eastbound right before Nogalito. So you can see right here, this car, this truck right here, some pretty good damage to it and a lot of debris right in front of it. So it pretty much can't move from here on out. So it's blocking on one of the right lanes. There's some other vehicles pulled up ahead, but it, they're off to the right shoulder right here. So they're not blocking traffic, but because we do have that right lane blocked on 90 eastbound at Nogalitos, we are going to have traffic backed up to about Frio City Road, RJ. 
All right, so good to hear from Alex. Unfortunate situation out there, and we are seeing traffic build up on 90 there as well. Do want to mention northwest side of town, also I-10 East at Bernie Stage Road. So things have gotten very busy out there on your Tuesday morning. All right, guys, 651 right now, 68 degrees outside. Let's take a live look outside at the city with live cam. Again, thanks so much for waking up with us, San Antonio. You see the traffic is moving just along perfectly. After the break, we got your show wrap up next. 655 right now. Let's get you out there with your traffic authority again. 90, 16 of far, far west side of town. We have a crash being reported in that area. I-10 Bernie Stage Road have a crash out there in the far northwest side of town. But speaking of 90, let's go ahead and check it with Alex Gomez because he's got another incident right there in Nogalitos. Alex, what is the latest? Yeah, and this backup is pretty much uh, getting pretty longer pretty quickly. As you can see right here, 90 eastbound, we're gonna have a truck that stalled out on one of the right lanes, so that's what's blocking up traffic right here. Uh, just west of downtown, so 90 eastbound is gonna be backed up from No Galitos all the way back to about General Hutno now, RJ. All right, so uh, yeah, I expect some delays if you're headed out on 90 right now. Of course, all those folks already uh, see delays on just a regular rush hour. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for making it out there, Alex. And we're seeing some delays on the cooler temperatures. Yes, we certainly <laughs> are. Even though mornings will start to trend a little bit cooler over the next couple of days. Now we're down to 67 degrees here in San Antonio. Plenty of sunshine in store, but with lower humidity working back in, that also means that high temperatures will stay hotter than average. So mid 90s over the next couple of days, low 90s this weekend, but at least those mornings will start to feel ever so slightly more fall like. Let's go. I'm all about it. <laughs> See, I told uh, you it was going to make it. Any sort of glimpse of fall. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take we'll it. Take it. Point. I'll see you guys on GMSA at 9. Bye, y'all. Have a great Tuesday.